Greetings. In our last episode, we set up this machine, a 1973 Big Shot by Gottlieb. It wouldn't turn on. We did some diagnosis on it and uh, turned out that uh, the seller, well, somebody in the past of this machine had replaced the AC plug and miswired it. We had the hot leg go into ground which I found out the hard way because I couldn't f figure out why it wouldn't turn on. I started measuring things and uh, the uh, main fuse inside of the machine, a glass fuse, blew to smithereens. The power strip blew a fuse and uh, the fuse for the outlet blew a fuse. So yeah, we had some serious AC problems in there. And of course, after checking everything else, I checked the actual plug and found the culprit. Once we fixed that, the machine turned on, but it didn't play too well. Things weren't working and it was really lame. I mean, you have to understand that electromechanical pinballs compared to modern pinballs are lame. They're slow. But this one was exceptionally slow and it wouldn't register a lot of the shots, so I went ahead to repair it. It doesn't look too bad take a look at the play field. It turns out that this machine was actually worked on as far as shopping it because the rubbers are all usable. The rubber rings in there, yes, they need to be replaced, especially since I got a mismatched one on the top right of the play field. I didn't have a replacement white one. But other than that, I left the existing ones in there and uh, it does play. I will eventually re-rubber it, but for now it's okay. I didn't film the actual repair and I'll explain why because it turns out that this machine was a no parts required repair. It was just cleaning contacts. And the reason for that is that on digital machines all of the switches are basically passing low voltage, low current signals that the computer reads or drives and then the microprocessor decides what to do. And yes, there are some high current lines coming out of there, but uh, there's not that many of them. In this machine, the way it works is that in order to activate a solenoid, you have to have a chain of contacts close. And when they close, they actually supply power directly to the solenoid in question. Now what that means is that there's, there's a good amount of current passing through each of these switches in the chain that is required to activate a solenoid. And uh, the switch, the contact surfaces tend to carbonize. So they start losing conductivity, eventually losing it completely because of the carbon buildup. And another reason is that some of the uh, blades of the uh, contacts get bent and either don't close properly when they should or don't open properly when they should. So what you're looking at is, this is basically the brains of the machine. It's got a bank of uh, relays in front, another two backs, banks back here. And then the motor unit, that is essentially like the clock that make th makes things happen sequentially. You need something, you need a clock to, to, to advance things, and the relays can't do that on their own. So what happens is, let's say we start a game. If you watch this guy, with all of the, their switch stacks, two or three stacked on top of each other, and four sets of them. So when you hit the start game button, you see that thing turning, it's resetting, it reset all of the player scores, activated and deactivated certain relays to do that, and then activated the big bank here, and reset it. Here's the play field itself, that has all the solenoids that actually do something. And if we start yet another game, 
And see, all it did to start a second game was it reset the drop target banks, advance the player unit that tells us, hey, there's two people playing, and now it's waiting for contact closures. So if I drop one of the drop targets, the motor starts spinning, it gives you 500 points, and it turns on the appropriate light of what drop target you have just put down. And remember, all of that is flowing through a multitude of switch leaves, or switch leaves with contacts on them, and once the circuit is completed, the uh, proper action happens. But we're looking at about a, to activate a solenoid like this, we're looking at over an amp of current flowing through that whole configuration of switches, and that's why the switches tend to get dirty. And the reason it was a no parts required repair was basically I analyzed the schematics to see if a certain feature wasn't working, identified all of the switches involved in that chain, whether they were supposed to be open or closed, and then measured them with a continuity meter. It's a two-step process. You want to use the continuity meter to see if the switch is making contact at all, but most meters will report continuity at around 50 ohms. And I wanted to make sure that the resistance of each switch was less than that. More, I'm more comfortable in the 1 ohm range, so then I use an ohm meter to check the whole path. And doing that, I found several carbonized switches, and one or two switches where the leaves had were bent weren't where they were supposed to be and weren't opening or closing. Here's what the score motor looks like. And again, it just spins happily, but there are probably about 30 or 40 contacts on it. And uh, even if one of them is misaligned or has high resistance or infinite resistance, the machine will act funny. And starting yet another game. Boom. Took all of that to reset the game to zero and uh, make the game ready for you. And here are the tools that I use to do the majority of the work with. First of all, a metal file that was used to clean the uh, contacts. Now, word of caution, you should only use a metal file on electromechanical games because of the heavy carbonization. This is the only way to get it off. Some of the newer machines have plated contacts that get dirty too, but it's mostly real dirt that just accumulates there and uh, messes with the conductivity. And generally, IPA and a Q-tip will clean up those contacts. Do not use a file on solid-state games. Always use a file on electromechanical games. The second tool was a contact adjustment tool. It has that slot on both ends and basically you slide that slot into a, a leaf on a contact and you can bend it by rotating it. You can bend the, the, the switch this way or that way in order to make it close or open properly. I did clean everything with IPA afterwards to get rid of whatever the file took off but probably wasn't even necessary. I had no parts. I had no broken switch switches or leaves or anything in there. Everything was good. It was just neglected or n not adjusted recently. And uh, after doing all of that, the machine became functional. Okay, so for the moment you've all been waiting for, let's play a game. And uh, I'm going to show you the uh, scores getting resets. reset uh, with all the racket that, that's being produced from within the machine. It's mostly for resetting the uh, scores.
So the object of this game is to collect as many pool balls as possible, 14 of them by hitting the side drop targets, and the 8 ball by the top center rollover, or the hole in the middle of the play field. A few rollovers on the side that give you some points, but uh, that is the extent of it. All right, may the best player win. Wonder who that's going to be. So what it was doing there was basically it uh, gives you your bonus and the first ball it's a thousand per uh, per cue ball collected but it basically scans all of the uh, lights that are lit and for every light that's lit it gives you the amount of bonus relative to that ball. So we're in ball two, now I'm going to get two thousand points for every cue ball. Oh well, there you go, I achieved a score of 32,150, I needed 59,000 to get a free game. One thing you may have noticed, I don't know if the sound came through, but uh, the flippers when you're holding them, they buzz a bit. And that is, uh, that happens a lot on uh, electromechanicals because the coils are actually driven by AC. So you can imagine it is much harder to keep a coil quiet when it's driven by AC rather than by DC which all modern machines use. And if I did another a full rebuild on the uh, flippers I could probably minimize that but things work just fine. This is how pinballs were in the old times. Well, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.